Hey guys, welcome to the Dynamic Duo. I'm Franz. I'm Kevin. We are still here and the lights are still on in the Batcave and in Avengers Tower, everybody. <laughs> Kevin, my friend, yesterday was the final day for the Book of Boba. And I've been dying to get your opinion on this. We haven't talked about this. We've been waiting for the whole series to be over. I have very strong opinions about it. And I know you have very strong opinions about, about it as well. And what is your review, your critique, and your rating for the Book of Boba Fett? This is going to surprise a bunch of people. Overall, I was disappointed. Mm, interesting. I was severely disappointed. I didn't hate the show. I thought that it did have a number of home runs. Mm -hmm. but overall they softened the character too much I appreciated in the beginning and in like the first two episodes that he was an older Boba Fett and somewhat softer and not doing a lot of the same things that we saw him do back in 1980 and since then but they overplayed their hand. A lot of people are not gonna like what I'm going to say now. I don't think that Din Djarin should have been in the thing at all. It should not have included Baby Grogu. These were great episodes. And I'm not saying that you couldn't have had them in as cameos. But to me, they didn't fit. And because of the popularity of Mandalorian, the appearances of Grogu and Din Djarin took away from what they were trying to convey with Boba. More of the story before it was over with began to focus on the Mandalorian and the fact that he's coming back for season three and baby Grogu. And of course, the the uh, uh, um, CGI animated version of Luke Skywalker that they created. But at the same time, with me being the Star Wars fan that I am, some of this was upsetting. There was way too much time where all Boba did was walk around with his helmet in his hand. Okay? That was a mistake. Part of what makes Boba Fett Boba Fett is some of his ruthlessness and the mystery of what lies beneath that helmet. Speak freely. In my opinion, the person that kept the show as hot as she could was actually Ming Na Wen. Because mm. in my opinion, she stole the show. Spoken such insolence. Mm. She was more Boba Fett than Tamara Morrison was, in my opinion. And I'm not so sure based on what I've been able to learn about their ratings numbers and what have you, that we're going to get a season two, even though it's been talked about. Because what Disney and the folks at Lucasfilm wanted were the kinds of numbers that they got from The Mandalorian, and that didn't happen. Well, listen, uh, um. I'm so that's why I love you uh and, and 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 it's because we can be objective in our critique and we could be thoughtful in our critique and um you said that I would be surprised actually I'm not surprised because I expected you to 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 see it for what it is um disclaimer I'm coming in this as a non-Star Wars purist um, I'm coming in as an outsider. I've seen the movies. I've watched the movies. I could pretend to be an insider. I'm not. Uh, I, you know, I don't bleed Star Wars by any stretch of the imagination. And so there's that perspective. So my review of, of the Book of Boba is the following. To me, it, to me the Book of Boba was very disappointing. And let me, let me make a very clear distinction. The Book of Boba Fett 
TV shows was disappointing. The reason I'm saying it that way is because I do feel that episodes, I think it's four, five, four and five. Is it, when, when did um, Ben Jurin come in? Uh, four, five, and six. Four, five, and six, uh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to me, that's not that wasn't the book. To me, to me, those weren't the book of Boba Fett episodes. They were literally the Mandalorian episodes. Mm -hmm. They were the Mandalorian episodes, not just with respect to the character. And some of them were purely a hundred percent just Mandalorian, you know, uh, Ben Jern. Um, but in style, in in editing, and filmmaking, like there was a distinct difference between the two. These were mandalorian episodes that they put in to the book of boba fett so those episodes to me were great four and five were fascinating they were great they were captivating they were good they were everything one and two and three were very very disappointing mm -hmm. we talked about i think we reviewed one and one to me was like ah, i don't know it's 50 50 it could go good it could go bad there are some really good aspects but there are some problematic aspects and the problematic got in the way. A show shouldn't get in the way of your enjoyment. Um, it, certain things got in the way, but not so badly that you, you don't give it a chance. Episode two and episode three, by the time Robert Rodriguez directed it, I think it was episode three with the 1980s, I mean, that, that was, was so bad. The 1980s style punk rock with the bad makeup. How does that happen? Can someone explain to me how that happens? Like, how does Disney, who was making a production of Star Wars based on John Favreau's Mandalorian, which is highest quality you could possibly have, huge budget, how did they come up with that cheesy crap? Like, that was horrible, yeah. disgusting. It was, the, 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 the makeup was terrible. The, the acting was bad. It was just bad in general. And so the book of Boba, was disappointing from a quality point of view, from a storytelling point of view, and most importantly, from a character point of view. We're absolutely right. And the actor, by the way, said so. He said, look, you guys are making a mistake and I don't want to, I don't want to participate in this. Mandalore, I mean, a book of, of the Boba Fett should not be talking as much as he does. He shouldn't have the helmet off as much as he does. You remove the mystery. Why is Ben Jurin so cool is because you know what, they should have never taken off that helmet. By the way, this is also reflective of superhero movies. I cannot stand it when the superhero has to remove his mask. That's not what it's supposed to be. Give me the, keep Captain America, Captain America. Anyway, I, I don't want to change the subject. The point is, uh, Boba Fett removing his mask literally demystifies the character, literally deflates him and reduces him into the opposite of what he is. He's supposed to be that character. Um, so doing that, that change alone um, lessens the character. But not only that, but in terms of character, he was weaker, like he changed his mind. He would say, oh, we're gonna do this. And someone would say, well, we should do that. Oh, all right, we should do that. Like over and over again, he wasn't a strong character. And he capitulated. He went along with whatever they, they essentially told him. And it, there was so much wrong with the book of Boba Fett. Having said that, I have to say, there was so much coolness with the Mandalorian episodes. I loved episode four and five. Holy moly. And every, by the way, my, the love of, you know, besides my wife and, and my kids or whatever. But anyway, uh, Bryce Dallas Howard. <laughs> oh my God. I, here's what happened. I was watching, I was watching the, the Mandalorian episode, episode five. And I'm like, wow, that is such a great episode. Mm -hmm. Who directed it? Bryce Dallas Bryce Howard. Dallas, no. Bryce Dallas Howard <laughs> directed that episode. And every little thing matters in directing. The way the character looks, the way he walks into the room, every inch of of Ben Jurin is cool. Like the way he stands, and they're completely emulating the Clint Eastwood spaghetti western. They went with the lone wolf and cub. That the choice between Baby Grogu choosing between the sword and the and the and, and the uh, chamber. That's directly from Lone Wolf and Cub. I know uh, Kosaki Kojima, um, Lone Wolf and Cub. Um, so so. It was brilliant, brilliantly delivered, fascinating, interesting, cool, 
everything that I uh, that I would have wanted. It is the Mandalorian to me is the pinnacle, and I this may be sacrilegious. And remember, I'm coming from the outside. It is the pinnacle of Star Wars to me. It is to me is the pinnacle of what Star Wars should be. It is delivered in the best way possible. All the other movies, there's some little issues here and there. Mandalorian to me is, is beautiful. I want to point out that holy crap, Kevin, they did it, man. Like, I don't know why this isn't being talked about because the most difficult thing that Hollywood has had to do is to emulate a human through CGI, mm -hmm. to make a human CGI. They've come close. They've done a really good job. They've certainly done it with monsters. Thanos looks pretty damn good. But when it's an actual human being, as close as they've gotten, you could always sit back and go, yeah, yeah, that's, that's really good CGI, but that's CGI. Holy crap, Luke Skywalker in that episode? That, that's as real, I, I challenge anybody to watch that and not know the characters and not know that you know, Mark Hamill is actually an old guy to, to pick out who is CGI. I, I challenge anyone to do that. That was awesome. Yes. And forgive me for saying this one last thing. This opens up, and I'm surprised people are not talking about it, but this opens up a really powerful opportunity. What it means, Kevin, and I'll let you talk, but what it means is that you can do a Star Wars movie involving Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, Princess Leia, Chewbacca in that period and deliver it and deliver it 100%. Dev, I've said my piece, my friend. You've, uh, first of all, thank you for opening the door because you just said what I was going to add. <laughs> there has already been a lot of internet chatter and a lot of, uh, of, of back and forth about, okay, when the Force Awakens and and the uh, uh, extended universe trilogy happened, we didn't get Han, Luke, and Leia together as the the trio that we remember with Chewie, Lando, and everybody else. So does this mean, in a lot of people's eyes, that we may be getting, even if it's in some form of of uh, uh, animated a uh, uh, pseudo human form that you're talking about, does this mean that we may get a movie with all of them concerned? It's, I feel it's a great possibility, but it depends upon how it's done. Now, one other quick thing that I wanna add before I close the book on uh, the book of the Mandalorian featuring Boba Fett, um, <laughs> that's a good one that's a good one the, the the thing is one of the other things that have been talked about and have been talked about and confirmed for more than a month and i just didn't say anything to you because i thought for damn sure we were going to see it in episode seven is that harrison ford ended up back on those stages Interesting. He was supposed, it had been reported that Han was back and that they did some form of a CGI thing with him. Now, here, here's the bizarre little part of this. It had originally been reported that the work he did was for the book of Boba Fett, but now I'm wondering, was it meant for uh, the Kenobi series that's coming instead. Well, that would make that would make sense. Yeah, that would make sense. But because a lot of people are saying they didn't actually cut Harrison Ford out of the book of Boba Fett, they may have, but I doubt it. But that has been talked about. One 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 thing. One other thing before we close the chapter on this on this topic, I wanted to do uh, to say one other thing. So, um. What that means, uh, Kevin, is that if they can replicate the movies with the Princess Leia, they can also keep the prototypical superhero. In other words, the, we don't need to reboot characters because actors are getting old. We could basically have a Spider-Man be a Spider-Man in a live action movie and keep him perpetually young. 
keep a Superman perpetually young, which would I think would be very, very cool. But I wanted to also critique the very last episode, episode seven, because I found that episode interesting and fascinating. Uh, in my opinion, it, it, it fell down to directing. Uh, I could see good directing and bad directing and the, the differences were obvious. Whoever was directing Mandalorian was doing a really good job and whoever was directing the book of Boba Fett, I, I wouldn't say they were all doing a bad job at, at all, but some of them were doing a bad job. The very last episode was both Boba and, and um, Ben Jurian. And, and what was interesting to me is that, and I don't really understand, like almost every scene that, that the Mandalorian was in was better than the scenes that Boba. And, and I'm not sure if it was because of the actors, because of direct, because they're, I'm not sure, but there was a difference, a distinct difference between the two things. I didn't think that uh, Ming, ja, what, what's her name? Uh, Ming Ja? Uh, Ming Na Win. Ming Na Win. I didn't think her, she's a great actress. I think she's like Academy Award nominated actress or even winning actress. But I didn't like her performance uh, in the in the book of Boba Fett, I, it, I found it weak. I found the perform. I found everyone's performance in the book of Boba's uh, performance weak. And the very last episode was some some as it was like the first episode of, of Book of Boba. Some aspects were really good, and some aspects were not so good. It, it was not so good, and it shouldn't get in the way. Like certain things shouldn't get in the way, like little common sense things. So, for example. He goes and gets the beast, and the beast is coming and attacking, you know, the 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 the, the machines with with the big cannons, and the cannons are facing the beast, you know, and just shoot the damn thing like that thing should not have been a threat. There's little things that the delivery just it didn't quite. It just there were a lot of little things that were like, oh no, that doesn't make sense. But then there were a lot of cool scenes, so yeah. it was like. Like some of it was really good, but some of it was really um, not so good. And so it was that. So the, the final episode to me was, I would give it a positive. Um, it wasn't as great as certainly the final episode of The Mandalorian, which was just sick and just awesome and just cool. Um, little things like little things like a director should be smart enough to say, you know what, that doesn't make sense. Let's take that out. And the editor should be involved as well. I mean, you know, Star Wars is notorious for guy, you know, stormtroopers not not being able to aim, but some of it was a little too ridiculous. Like, right? don't 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 exaggerate it type of thing. So there were little things like that that got in the way of Episode Seven. But overall, I thought Episode Seven was also very very good.